In the piece, I use two terms to provide a catch-all umbrella label for the package approach to cultural engagement that Keller's most prominent disciples adopt, winsome third wayism. And I'm not absolutely opposed to either term. There are biblical imperatives related to winsomeness that we can't ever abandon, and I'll discuss those in a moment. And at its best, third wayism attempts to avoid tribalism and uncritical partisanship and to minimize divisions between Christians who come to different conclusions over prudential judgments and politics within the realm of moral orthodoxy. But what I refer to with this catch-all label is the package approach to cultural engagement that seeks above all to minimize offense so as to maximize openness to the gospel message. Too often, though, I argue, it, this translates into niceness, which I believe is a sentimentalized reduction of the biblical vision. And it ends up producing a few common effects in the adherence of the model. First, it leads Christians to embrace the narratives pushed by our cultural elites, many of whom are increasingly hostile to Christianity and its moral teachings, a development which I believe has exhibited acute acceleration in recent decades. Second, this leads Christians to scorn fellow believers often to their right who are more out of step with the cultural consensus. Christians who adopt this model are often quick to accept culture's views of Christians to dump on those deemed fundamentalists and to punch right when they are told. Joshua Mitchell describes this as innocent signaling, and those who do this enjoy what Carl Truman calls progressive privilege. And thus they are more reticent to acknowledge the profound cultural shifts in recent years because they enjoy temporary protection from the left's cultural warriors as a result of engaging in ritual acts of Christian self-loathing, scapegoating Christians to their right, and focusing only on Christian moral teachings that comport with the contemporary status quo. Three, since culture has shifted so significantly, I argue, no matter how nicely Christians present traditional biblical positions on certain hot button issues, they will be viewed as backwards and bigoted, as unloving and unwinsome. And this will lead them, I think, to doubt their convictions. Christians will be pressured to assume that loving the sinner means affirming and supporting their sin. In my essay, I tied all of this to Aaron Wren's Three Worlds of American Evangelicalism article and his framework in that. In that article, he describes pretty acute shifts in the last decade dating to Obama's second term in which American society has become more outright opposed to traditional Christian conceptions of justice and social morality. One of my key arguments in the piece was that the winsome third way model for cultural engagement was more suited to an earlier era and is less fitting for our context. My other main critique, besides how a shift in, in context demands a new approach to cultural engagement, is less context specific. I argue that Keller and his disciples tend often to approach politics and cultural engagement on hot button issues through the lens of evangelism and thus in an apologetic mode. This leads Christians, often and in various ways, to let the broader culture set the terms for our engagement out of fear about negative perception. And one of my main arguments that I develop further in a follow-up essay at American Reformer is that this approach is actually always incorrect, for at least three reasons. First, I don't believe we can be so certain how our political judgments and actions will be assessed by the broader public, especially some public in the future. For instance, on abortion and uh, opposition to the pushing of trans ideology on children, future generations might plausibly look back and wonder how our age permitted these horrors and admire those who resisted the status quo and fought for the most vulnerable. And thus, they might be open to their message. Who knows? Two, other than that, I think that this, is, this way of approaching politics through the lens of evangelism is simply a category error. Politics is not about minimizing offense so as to maximize openness to the evangelistic message. Politics is rather focused on the pursuit of justice and the just ordering of society. Three, lastly, this approach leads to all sorts of false moral equivalencies on issues and strategies, producing an almost crippling inability to recognize and publicly admit when there is a moral asymmetry between contemporary sides and even among the issues themselves. What then happens is adherents of this approach constantly highlight with equal air time the flaws in each strategy or position. This then inhibits the capacity to act in accord with proper political prudence. Some causes, I argue, are simply more important than others, some issues are black and white, and some strategies are clearly more in accord with justice.